Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says that the yellow and blue triangles have an area of 100, and it wants to know what is the area of the pink plus the green. And we're also given that these three are equilateral triangles. This is day 17 of our Agvent calendar. For the month of December, we're gonna solve 31 Katrina Ag puzzles in 31 days. And so far we are a couple days behind schedule, but we will catch up. If you wanna try this one on your own, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. We're given three equilateral triangles, but all three have different side lengths. So let's call the side lengths A, B, and C. And let's focus on the yellow triangle. Since it's an equilateral triangle, this side will also be equal to A. And if we drop the perpendicular bisector here and go across here, this will be a right angle and this side will be half of this side, which is A over two. And the yellow triangle is an equilateral triangle. That means each of these angles is 60 degrees and this cut it in half, making this 30 degrees. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We can use these notes for 30, 60, 90 triangles. For any 30, 60, 90 triangle, the medium side is square root of three times larger than the smaller side. So to get this side, we multiply square root of three times a over two. And let's smush everything together to give us radical three a over two. And that is the height of the yellow triangle and we can mark it up here. And the same idea is gonna happen for the blue triangle. Since the base is b, the height is gonna be square root of three b over two. And the same thing for the pink equilateral triangle. Since the base is c, the height is gonna be equal to square root of three c over two. Now we have the base and height of three of our triangles. We just gotta do the green one now. And to do that, let's use the yellow and the blue triangles. First, let's rotate it like this. And let's look at this base of the green triangle. It's shared with the blue triangle, so it'll have a length of B. And then to find the height of the green triangle, that's the same thing as the height of the yellow triangle, which is equal to radical 3A over two. So let's label this radical 3A over two. And now we have the base and height of our green triangle. So we have the base and height of all four of our triangles. This is kind of beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Let's calculate the area of each of these. The area of each of these triangles will be one half base times height. So we already know these two add up to 100. So I'm hoping we can somehow tie these formulas into these formulas. First, let's simplify all of this. The base of the yellow triangle is A and the height is radical 3A over two. Let's smush everything together. This one isn't doing anything. A times A is A squared and two times two is four. And that is the area of our yellow triangle. I'm gonna go through these a little faster. The base of the blue one is B and the height is radical 3B over two. The base of this one is C and the height is radical 3C over two. And the base of the green one is B and the height is radical 3A over two. The ones aren't doing anything. B times B is B squared and C times C is C squared. And each of the two times twos on the bottom are equal to four. How exciting. I don't know why I just said that. I just think this looks so good. So let's rearrange these. And when we add these two triangles together, we know it's 100. So that means this plus this is 100. And then we can clean this up a little bit. Both of these terms contain a radical three over four, so let's factor out radical three over four. We'll be left with a squared plus b squared. So we have radical three fourths a squared plus b squared is equal to 100. This looks important, let's put a box around it. And let's do the same thing down here. So this triangle plus this triangle, that's our question mark. That's the thing we're trying to solve for. So let's figure out this sum. Both of these terms have a radical three over four, so let's factor out radical three over four. And on the inside, we'll be left with c squared plus ab. And this is gonna be equal to our question mark. This also looks important, let's put a box around it. And now let's compare these two formulas. We're gonna to have to do more work. Somehow we gotta tie a, b, and c together. And that's totally making me think Pythagorean theorem. Let's try to find a right triangle somewhere. Let's do it right here. Let's get rid of this pink triangle and move the C up here. Let's move the whole thing up here. Let's try this right triangle right here. The hypotenuse is C, which is really promising. We just gotta figure out what these are in terms of A and B. Let's drop down this perpendicular bisector. The whole side is equal to A, which means this half would be A over two. And then let's drop this perpendicular bisector. This whole thing is B, so this half would be B over two. And this length is the same thing as the base of our triangle. And it's gonna be A over two plus B over two. And then we can factor a one half out of both of these terms. And on the inside of the parentheses, we're left with A plus B. And that's the base of our triangle. Now let's focus on this height. 
If we take the height of our blue triangle and subtract the height of the yellow triangle, that'll give us this right here. So let's bring back our two triangles. It's literally gonna be the height of the blue one, radical 3b over two, minus the height of the little one, radical 3a over two. So this is the height of our triangle. Both of these terms contain a radical three over two, so let's factor that out. And on the inside, we'll be left with b minus a. And let's move that up here. Now we're ready for Pythagorean theorem. It'll be this squared plus this squared equals this squared. And now if we clean this up, we'll have one additional relationship between a, b, and c. This exponent will distribute to the 1 half and the a plus b. And this exponent will distribute to the rad 3 over 2 and the b minus a. And we're still going to be equal to c squared. From here, 1 squared is equal to 1 and 2 squared is equal to 4. Radical 3 squared is equal to 3 and 2 squared is equal to 4. I don't really like fractions, so let's multiply everything on both sides of the equation by 4. This 4 and 1 fourth will cancel each other out. And this 4 and this 4 will cancel each other out, leaving us with a 3 in front. And this 4 times c squared is 4c squared. So now we got to add this plus this. Let's move them down here. a plus b squared is the same thing as a plus b times a plus b. And after you multiply that out, it'll be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then b minus a squared is the same thing as b minus a times b minus a. And when you multiply that out, it'll be b squared minus 2ab plus a squared. And then next, let's distribute this 3 to all of these. And for the middle term, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. Now let's add these together. a squared plus 3a squared is 4a squared. 2ab minus 6ab is negative 4ab. And b squared plus 3b squared is 4b squared. And now we're done simplifying the left-hand side. Next, every single term contains a 4, so let's divide both sides of the equation by 4. All these 4s will cancel each other out, and these two 4s will cancel each other out. So we're left with a squared minus ab plus b squared equals c squared. Let's rearrange and enhance. So this is good news. We have a c squared, which matches this, an ab, which matches this, and the a squared and the b squared. I think we're almost done. Let's add ab to both sides. So on the left-hand side, we'll have c squared plus ab, which is this right here, and that'll be equal to a squared plus b squared, which is this right here. So now I think we got everything we need. Let's clean this up and bring this all up here. Let's break this out of the box, and we're going to do a substitution. In the place of the c squared plus ab, we're going to plug in a squared plus b squared. And then in the place of radical 3 over 4 times a squared plus b squared, we're going to plug in 100. And that's going to be equal to our question mark. This is the area of the pink and green triangles summed together. Let's give it a label of units squared and put a box around it. And let's move it up here. So for this diagram, the pink and green triangles have the same area as the yellow and blue ones. As long as the three triangles on the outside are equilateral. How exciting. This is the next challenge. It says the radius of the circle is 4. What's the combined area of the two squares? I'm thinking this one will be a little bit less work than today's. I can't wait to see it. How exciting.